Hello everyone, welcome to a new video in our Azure uh, API management series. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Redis Cache for your Azure API uh, management. First, go to the portal.azure. As you can see, I already have my instance of my API management. I also already created a new uh, Azure Cache for Redis. If you don't have one, you can create a new one. It's uh, very simple. Uh, you look for Redis. This will give you some results. It takes a little bit longer. Uh, you choose for Azure Redis for, ca for uh, Azure Cache for Redis. Excuse me. Next thing, uh, click on Create. I'm all, I've already created. You need to enter a name. You can choose a pricing pricing plan. I have used the basic. It's good for testing, but of course, when you have something serious, you have like a real. Uh, uh, real life production the, uh, web api then maybe the premium one would be the most uh, uh, best thing to choose you can leave the settings uh, as is public endpoint um, if you would like you can change it to private endpoint and then do something with uh, private endpoints between the api management and in your redis cache but for now just keep the public endpoint also our um, the redis version i just kept it on four you can try six uh, and that's that. So that's if you are, don't even have any uh, Azure Cache for Redis, but if you have one, you can reuse it. Um, yeah. Next thing. First of all, we need to have the connection string because we're going to use the connection string uh, inside our API management. So click on Azure Cache for Redis. Go to access keys. And if, uh, if I go here, yes, we can choose the primary um, connection string. Copy it. Well, next, we go back to our Azure, uh, uh, Azure API management. Next, we click on external cache. You can also find it uh, over here at deployment and infrastructure. Click on add. We choose custom. <coughs> we choose the location from where it is. I, uh, uh, I think it was in West Europe. Next thing is we paste our connection string. Everything seems good. We save it, and our cache is uh, ready. Refresh it. Now, of course, we want to use this uh, cache also in our API products. So we go back to our APIs. As you can see we have still we have the existing uh, API we already uh, used in the previous videos. We're gonna add a new policy. We're gonna search for the cache response. How, how long do we want the cache to be valid? I'm gonna keep it on, uh, let's do it like 30 minutes or something, 30 seconds. That is a little bit uh, small, but maybe handy for me for now for the demos, but you will maybe have something like 600. Depends on your situation and on the data and how important consistency is for your uh, uh, solution. We save it. We successfully saved. The next thing we can uh, try to make a first call. Yeah, next we click on uh, send because we want to test it. Of course, the first time it will put it in the cache, but the next time we want to be sure that it's in the cache because now we can uh, we can use trace to see if it went to the cache. If we go, it says like we're going to use up there. It says cache uh, lookup result is a miss. So as you can see, it will probably put it in the, in the cache. So that's a good thing. Next thing, we're going to send it again and see what it does now. I'm going to just do it for sure to go back. If we go down <coughs> to the part of, uh, as you can see, it says cache lookup result in a hit. Caching result will be used. So it's working. And as you can see, also it's using the cache. In West Europe, and also if we go to our uh, Redis uh, cache, we will see some activity all the way over here, as you can see. So uh, that's that. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and uh, watch my upcoming videos. And have a nice day.